Hey guys, how's it going? And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the working of an active low pass filter. Now, by definition, a low pass filter only allows signals with frequencies lower than a certain critical frequency to pass through it. And if the filter contains any active components such as an op amp, that is an operational amplifier, then it is known as an active low pass filter. Now to make the active low pass filter I use this particular circuit that you are seeing on your screen. Now and the peculiar thing about this circuit diagram is that it uses the operational amplifier right here in an inverting mode. As you can see that the input is given through the inverting terminal that is the second terminal of the 741C operational amplifier IC. And pre it's pretty basic actually it's just a low pass filter circuit uh, using the R2 and C and then they have uh, added an operational amplifier to just amplify the input signal and thus making the low pass filter containing R2 resistance and the C capacitance as an active low pass filter. Now the formula for the critical frequency or the cutoff frequency of an active low pass filter is given by 1 by 2 pi R2C and you can see that R2 is the resistance right here and C is this capacitance right here. So you can use this formula to calculate what your th theoretical cutoff frequency should be and then after you design your active low pass filter then you can verify if you are getting the same results as I'm going to be doing in a few moments from now. Now this particular low pass filter that I'm showing you is also known as a first order active low pass filter or a Butterworth filter because if you take the input for a variety of frequency and plot the gain versus those frequencies on a graph then you get a graph of somewhat this kind and uh, a Butterworth filter has the characteristic that this graph is almost flat in this region and it falls off at the rate of 20 decibels per de decade after the cutoff frequency which is being shown by this green line right here and another thing to note is that at the cutoff frequency the gain is about minus 3 decibels and we arrive at this result quite theoretically so you can have a slight error when you perform this experiment and since this is only a practical demonstration so I will not be going into any theory of the, um, the this graph or the low pass filter however I would recommend that you check out my another tutorial on the active low pass filter in which I explain how we arrive at the formula for the cutoff frequency and I also explain this graph right here but if you only want the practical demonstration then you can continue watching this video and this is my experimental setup for this circuit and this is my power supply for the operation amplifier and let me just hold this frame right here so that we can compare it with this circuit diagram so this wire right here is my input signal then this resistance is the R1 resistance which is going into the second terminal of the or the second pin of the 741C operational amplifier and as you can compare it with the circuit diagram there is another resistance R2 popping over towards the sixth pin of the 741C IC and another capacitance that is C uh, as compared to the circuit diagram which is going from the second terminal or the second pin of the 741 CIC to the sixth pin of the operational amplifier since the sixth pin is for the output and then there is another yellow wire in this sixth pin connected to the sixth pin of the operational amplifier or to the output of the operational amplifier which we would be of observing on the DSO that is the digital storage oscilloscope. Let me just uh, get a zoom in into uh, towards the pins so that you can see them even more clearly. Okay so that's better and also note that the seventh pin of this operational amplifier is connected to the positive terminal of the battery that is to uh, to the 15 plus 15 volts and the fourth terminal the yellow wire right here is going towards the negative 
terminal of the power supply. Now I'm giving a 20 Hz input signal to this active low pass filter and I'm observing the output on the DSO. Now let me just hold this frame right here for a moment. Now as you can see that the yellow curve is for the input signal and the blue curve is the output signal that I'm get getting from the active low pass filter. Now as you can see since we used the operational amplifier in an inverting configuration therefore both the signals are out of phase. Now that we can see that our low pass filter is working what we are going to do is we are going to observe the output signal for a variety of frequencies and then we are going to plot the gain versus frequency graph. So just set the frequency generator at a particular frequency let's say I set it at approximately 40 hertz 41 hertz or 42 hertz and then go over to your DSO and observe the input as well as the output signal now I have already measured my input signal to be at around 3.52 volts so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the the amplitude of my output signal and okay so just turn on the cursor mode of my DSO and measure the amplitude of the output signal and I'm getting somewhat 3.60 volts as the output voltage at 42 hertz as can be seen from the DSO so just note down that reading on your observation file and then change the frequency again and note down that reading too now I'm sorry I forgot to tell you the values of the resistances and the capacitances that I used in the circuit before so let me just tell you that the R2 resistance that I'm using is of 1 kilo ohm and the capacitance is of 0 0.01 microfarad and if you calculate the cutoff frequency using the formula that I showed you before that was 1 by 2 pi R2C then you get the cutoff frequency at about 15,923 hertz that is approximately 16 kilohertz so theoretically or as you will observe experimentally my output voltage will remain um, about somewhere between 3.5 to 3.6 volts um, up till I reach the cutoff frequency since the input voltage that is the yellow curve right there is of 3.60 volts or somewhere um, near that so the cutoff frequency uh, I'm sorry so the output voltage will also be somewhat um, somewhere near that up till I reach the critical frequency and as you can see I am getting the same voltage again and again now let's see what we get at the cutoff frequency that is 16 kilohertz as you can see I have given 16 kilohertz input signal and I am getting approximately 2.62 volts which is almost correct as at the cutoff frequency I should be getting 70.7 percent of the input voltage and since the input voltage is 3.6 volts it's 70.7 percent comes out at about something 2.54 volts now let's increase the frequency a little further and observe the output voltage and just turn on the measuring mode of your DSO I'm just adjusting the curve a little bit okay so if you measure the output voltage now it would be about 2.56 volts or 58 volts which is good and now I have increased the input frequency to about 25 kilohertz and the output voltage is now 2.14 volts so just keep taking the readings of the output voltage at various frequencies at least I would say that you take at least 25 readings be below the cutoff or the critical frequency and then another 25 readings above the cutoff frequencies so that you have approximately like at least 50 values to plot a good curve between the output voltage and the frequency or 
even you can plot a curve between the gain and the frequencies so take a lot of readings and make sure that uh, you and the output voltage at the cutoff frequency is at about 70.7 percent of the input voltage and this is the curve that I got when I plotted the gain in decibels on the y-axis and the log of the frequency along the x-axis and as you can see I took a lot of readings that's why I have gotten a pretty smooth curve and it also matches the theoretical plot in a very good manner so that's how you perform this experiment if you have any questions or doubts don't forget to drop them in the comment section down below and i will definitely get back to you and that's it thanks for watching and have a great day ahead